Well, it changed quite a bit, and originally it really was focused on one particular clause of the Constitution, which is the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. And that's the home of the equality guarantee in the Constitution. It says, uh, no state shall deny any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. And you know, some people say right now, the Bush administration, that it looks at the Constitution and it sees only the Article Two, which is the presidential powers portion of the Constitution. In my, my early days, I looked at the Constitution and I really only saw the Equal Protection Clause, that that was really the key uh, part of the document and that was what I was going to build my career on. And for the first five years of writing, I was writing about how gays fit and didn't fit you know, within that portion of the Constitution, how racial minorities fit and didn't fit, how women fit and didn't fit. And as time goes on, it's been a very happy movement for me, and it actually goes back to your earlier question, which is to say that I see that the equality guarantee is a really critical part of the Constitution, but it's only one part of a very broad array, both of rights and of powers. And we have many, many other kinds of rights that are important from a civil rights perspective. So that in this key case in 2003, Lawrence versus Texas, where the United States Supreme Court struck down a Texas sodomy statute, Justice Kennedy did not say this is a gay rights case, even though he and the rest of the country understood that as a gay rights case. He said, we're not going to decide this under the Equal Protection Clause. We're going to decide this under the Liberty Clause. And what we're really talking about in this case is the right of all people in the United States, whether they're gay or straight or bisexual or choose to identify in some other way, to have sexual privacy. So what you do in your own home with another consenting adult is your own business. And so he actually based it on the liberty provision of the 14th Amendment, the Due Process Clause. And I felt like that was a really important decision because it changed the case from a case that was only about a tiny, tiny subset of the American polity to a case that was about all of us, you know, that everyone on the Supreme Court, you know, everyone the Supreme Court was addressing when that opinion was read out and the country as a whole. So as I get older, this goes back to your question of is gayness an identity or is it something else? Is it a kind of conduct? You know, as I get older and more mature in my understanding of the Constitution, I see that civil rights can't simply focus on the equality provision and group-based equality. It has to focus on universal liberties, not just in the Substantive Due Process Clause of the 14th Amendment, but also the First Amendment's free speech rights, the First Amendment's free exercise rights, and also, in an even more subtle way, in the powers provisions of the Constitution that articulate what both the ambit and the limits of federal uh, governmental and state governmental power are, because oftentimes we find freedom where uh, governmental power ends.